My article is sort of a follow-up in class regarding our discussion of Greece and the Eurozone crisis. Um, and it talks a lot about the role of the International Monetary Fund, which we didn't really discuss in class, but actually plays a big role in uh, as to how they're trying to approach this uh, situation with Greece. And when the Eurozone rescued Greece in 2010, Germany uh, insisted on enlisting the help of the IMF. Um, some worried about letting the Washington-based institution meddle in Europe regarding this situation. But Germany mostly wanted the IMF to act as an external enforcer of sorts to impose rigor not only on Greece, but on what they call the soft-hearted European Commission. Um, the IMF has been probably Greece's big helper in this whole thing. Um, they have sought to ease the pace of austerity or soften the terms that have been imposed on Greece as to how they meet their debt. Um, and the head of the International Monetary Fund has implemented some measures to assist them. Um, one is that Greece has been given more time to reach its budget targets. And the terms of the Eurozone loans have been softened. Nevertheless, whether these measures make a difference or not, the Eurozone has come to accept that Greece cannot bear the burden of its debt and that creditors will have to take some losses. Now, this was not the intended consequence of bringing in the experience of the IMF um, because it was intended to safeguard uh, the taxpayers' money, particularly Germany's taxpayers' money. Um, but the crisis has worsened. Uh, Cyprus is about to become the fourth country to receive a bailout. And once again, the European Central Bank will have to step in. Nevertheless, the original and an ending crisis lies in Greece. Um, much of the blame is, of course, in Greece's politicians and their inability to implement a um, collection tax collection system, as we discussed. Um, but also the Eurozone has made some mistakes, including the failure to recognize that Greece was supposed to begin with. And Europe's creditors must now confront the question as to how much of Greece's official debt can't, needs to be written off. Um, the IMF's toughest struggle has been to convince Germany and others that Greece cannot repay the money it owes. It simply can't. Not with the measures that are in place currently. Um, the IMF thinks that some of those thresholds, such as the debt of 120% of the GDP that needs to be met by 2020. Uh, they criticize that as being too high. Um, the head of the IMF made just plainly clear that unless Greece's debt was cut back, the IMF would lend no more money. So a compromise was finally met uh, with a commitment to cut Greece's debt to 124% of the GDP in 2020 and to 110% of that GDP um, two years later. Uh, additionally, Greece's interest rates have uh, was cut by 1% and interest payments were deferred by 10 years. Um, and there was a pro compromise to do more if necessary, but this would only take place if Greece reaches a primary surplus. Of course, it's not clear. This is not the clear write-off that the IMF wanted. Um, but they have acknowledged that they must take losses to keep Greece in. And for now, they have established that Greece will remain part of the European community as far as the Eurozone goes. Um, but the biggest challenge will be restoring Greece's confidence. And as we talk in class, that's a big part of um, a big part of being successful economically with investors and and all that confidence that is needed. Um, Germany understandably wants to keep the pressure up, however, and they are, will continue to be reluctant to writing off uh, any debts 
for Greece. Um, they will meet on December 13 and 14 to debate the future of the Eurozone. And the lesson to be learned here is that delaying the inevitable only makes it more painful and more costly. And personally, I think that's some advice that I hope our government takes into account as we approach the fiscal cliff so that we don't end up like Europe, particularly Greece. We'll see what happens. Thank you.